keep learning, and I will see you soon. Ciao for now. Hey folks, it's me, Professor Blowers. Excited to work with you on the PowerPoint Chapter 5 Greater Assignment. Let's have a look and dive right on into it. So, jazz music. Let's uh, go ahead and enable editing. That'll be the first order of business. Notice that we've got two slides built in right here in the folder, which we have just um, unzipped or extracted. You'll find these files, the PowerPoint Jazz Origins PowerPoint, your final result. Would you look at that? We've got an audio. That'll be fun. We've got three JPEG images to work with. So let's have a look at the instructions and find out the first order of business. Well, we've already done it. We open the file. So on to step two, we're going to insert two new title and content slides for eight points. So um, back to our PowerPoint. Go ahead and click on the insert tab. Well, you know what? Let's do it from here. Um, home tab in the slides group, click the new slide button and go ahead and click title and content once. Oh, but let's drag it to after slide three. So pardon me, you'll notice that I was right up here. I had slide one selected, did that on purpose. Um, it will automatically insert a slide after the one that you are on. So now I'm on slide two and I'll insert that second title and content slide and it'll go in right here as the directions are asking for two new title and content slides after slide two. So I just wanted to show you that. You can also pretty readily move around these slides over here on the panel. Uh, so if you insert them um, just randomly, you can then scoot them down below the uh, singer. And then we'll be moving on to slide number three. Slow, um, so slide three, step three in the content placeholder from our files, we're going to insert the jazz to JPEG. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. And in the placeholder right in here, we're going to insert that file. And so what you're looking for is this button right here that says pictures. Go ahead and click it. And we will go to um, our downloads or wherever you have the student data files or the Jazz Origins files. The one that we're looking for is Jazz 2. So you can go ahead and either double click it or click it and select insert. Make sure on the right hand side, the design ideas panel pops up, right? And have a look around at all these different options. It's handy, I think. Um, so what you want to do is select the one that has the singer on the left hand side. And that's this first one right here. And then that's six points for you. For step number four, we're going to insert P05G Jazz 3. And then we're going to select another one using design ideas. So steps three and four are fairly similar. So go ahead and for step number four, click on slide number four. Same spot on the bottom left, go ahead and select the pictures button. Navigate to your files. It should default to the same folder that you are already in. The one we're looking for is Jazz 3, which is the one with the fingers playing the piano. I'm gonna double click this time to insert it and have a look at the directions. And we're looking for the one in the design ideas with the picture on the left and the title on the right. That looks like this one right here. Perfect, so go ahead and select that. And for step number five, you can go ahead and navigate to the first slide. And step five is asking us to format the title font, standard color red, and change the font size to 72. So let's select the title, which is jazz music. So click in here, and you can click three times to select it all, or click and drag, or Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac. Once you have it selected, the first order of business, home tab in the font group, select the font symbol or that A. And what we're looking for is your standard red color down here at the bottom. Go ahead and click that. And again, home tab font group, up where you'll see on mine it says 60, hover over it to say the font size. We'd like the font size to be 72. On the same step down in the subtitle area, Go ahead and shift O, capital O for origins, shift seven for the ampersand or the and symbol, and capital E for elements as such. And then go ahead, click and drag, command A, 
triple click. Uh, get these, get this selected, get your subtitle selected. We'll apply the same red to standardize this slide, and that would be down um, naturally in standard colors. Hover over it, it'll say red, and the font size is currently set to 24. Hey, let's double that to 48. We should be in business right there. And then it's gonna ask us the last bit of this one. It says format the background with a picture. That's that fourth picture from the data files. Jazz 4, so let's go back, have a look at the data files. And there it is right in here. You could also change your view to large icons so you can actually see all of the icons. Um, just a Windows or Office tip for you. But let's actually format the background and make some changes, hey? And it's a fun one. So let's go ahead and in the, and we're still on slide number one, click on the design tab up at the top. And over on the right side in your customized group, you'll see a button called Format Background. Hover over it to learn how to do that or what that does. But I'll go ahead and click Format Background, click on Picture or Text Fill, and then you'll see the Picture Source. Click on the Insert button, and let's navigate to our files from a file, that's right, and Jazz 4. Sounds like the one, let's double click that, and voila there is the formatted picture in the background, right? But we still have one last thing to do. And let's continue formatting the background. Uh, let's see here, format background should still be open on the right hand side. We're going to offset the top instead of negative 79. Let's get that out of there and set it to negative 20. And I think that fits a lot better, looks great. Next order of business, uh, we'll go ahead and click on slide number two and select the picture. Perfect. Now, if you do that in that order, your format picture panel should pop up on the right-hand side. What we'll do is click from the Pentagon, which is effects, over to size and properties. And we wanna change the position of this image too. So let's drop down position right here. Notice the horizontal and vertical position. Let's move this picture around first. So what we'll do is once we have that position drop down, let's change the horizontal position to five. Perfect. And we won't do anything else with the other one. And it'll give us some space here on the left-hand side. So five inches is what you'll actually set the horizontal position to, pardon me. Then click on this picture button and we're going to change the brightness. So go ahead, there it is, under picture corrections. Down under brightness, we're going to increase the brightness to 20%. Okay, notice um, uh, how that brightened the subject in the photo. Then what we're gonna do is with all of this extra space that we just created by moving the picture's horizontal position to five inches, we're going to insert a text box. So go over and click on the insert tab and let's have a look for it over in the text group you'll notice here is our text box and the size of the text box isn't very important um, you can just place it somewhere along the left hand side here and so insert tab text group put in the text box let's draw it as such we'll start by typing origin Enter, type late 19th century, enter, type in New Orleans, comma, Louisiana. All right, there's our text box right here. And our next order of business is to change the font size. Um, let's have a look at the instructions though, because we're on step number five. No, we are not. We're on step number seven for 12 points. We need to change the font size to 32 and then position it horizontally at 0.5 inches and vertically at two inches. All right, so let's go in and we will go ahead and uh, control A to select all the text. Font size, let's change that to 32. Press enter. And I'm starting to see some discrepancies between mine and how the final result on the book looks, right? And we do know how to go back and make changes on that. So let's see what we can do. I had myself worried there, but we're all good. Have a look. So notice your workspace, all right? So I had zoomed in a fair amount in the bottom right-hand corner. You can zoom. 
and I had zoomed and moved over a handful, trying to demonstrate it really quick, moved over a bit. So I had falsely assumed that the edge of my uh, PowerPoint slide here was there at the corner. And as I zoomed out, I noticed, all right, we're, in, we're good. I just drew my text box a little bit too much centered in this area. So I'll just, and you can always make room. We'll change this later manually. I just wanted to show you in case you maybe had uh, zoomed in too far, or if your slide or your PowerPoint doesn't look like mine, um, there's a lot of things that we can do to manipulate our workspace in order to be more efficient. So um, just want to make sure that we've got all this down. We have all that. Size is 32. We've got our format shape panel open here on the right hand side and we are back to business. So let's see here. Position it horizontally at 0.5 vertically at 2.5 vertically at 2. Okay, here we are. So 0 0.5 right here, vertically. And notice how it just ever so slightly inched over. Our vertical position is going to be changing from 2.99 to two. And I can put in the inch symbol right there. And notice how it moved it up a bit, which is why I said, don't worry about where you put the text box. We'll manually position it later. We just got done with that. So we positioned it great. On slide three, we know from the instructions if it's written in blue, then we need to type something. And so we'll type musical origins on slide three. So back to PowerPoint. We're done on slide two for now. Click slide three. Click to add title. Type in capital M, musical origins. Splendid. Back to the instructions, and you'll notice. Let's see, change the picture color to under color tone temperature 4700K. All right, let's jump to it. And again, I may be improvising for these next few steps and see how the grader takes it, but it's always an adventure in PowerPoint. So what we're going to do, once you've typed musical origins, go ahead and select the image on the left-hand side. You'll see the format picture panel um, go up. And now what you'll do is notice the picture format tab populates up at the top. Then in the adjust group, you're going to look for a color button, which is this. And the one we're looking for is, I remember 4,700. Hey, temperature 4,700K. That's the one right here. Go ahead and select it. And I'd say with the soft, warm blue colors, let's give this picture some uh, soft edges. So what you'll do is click on the effects button, which is this pentagon here. And we'll be looking for, you know what, that's one way to do it. Let's go up here, actually. Picture format tab, picture of, picture styles group, the picture effects button is this one right here. And there's a simpler way to get to soft edges. And what we're looking for, hey, there's the one, 25 point. And you can go ahead and select that. And notice how the blue makes the corners and the edges of this picture fade into the background. I think that's pretty neat. So here's where I'm choosing to improvise really quick. Now, I am going to go ahead and follow along if you have this as well. I'm trying to get some points back from the grader. So let's delete this placeholder right here. And we are going to um, go ahead and do, let's move this down for now. All right, and I'll get you these points back. Let's move that out of the way. Click the insert tab. We'll insert another text box up at the top here. Right, let's say right there. And we'll go ahead and start typing in work songs. Enter, hymns, enter, sorrow songs, as well as spirituals. All right, and we'll go ahead and extend the text box out just a little more here and have a look at the instructions. So we're on step number nine right here. And we've, yep, I'm just making sure we've changed step number eight, we're good. Above the title, notice that this is why I've moved some things around. So what we need to do is change the font size to 28 and position it horizontally at seven and vertically at two. All right, back to PowerPoint, size 28. So control A to select it all. Home tab, font group, scroll down to 28. Perfect. In the format shape 
panel on the right hand side and let's go to sh uh, shape properties and we will go ahead and double check the numbers. I know it was seven and two, horizontal seven, vertical two. And we're pretty close. We're at 6.67, let's change that to seven and vertically position it at two. Perfect. And notice how it changed ever so slightly. Those were some quick steps right there. Step number 11, we're going on to slide number four. So type the title elements and we'll uh, change the brightness slightly. So let's go ahead and do it. Slide number four, no title. We'll go ahead and type in elements for now. Now this should be familiar, but with computers as with anything, fundamentals are important. So let's dive into it. So slide number four, let's, uh, after we've typed in elements, let's select the picture and let's find where to change or adjust the brightness. And that would be under the effects button. That's our Pentagon. Go ahead and let's see here. Nope, not in there. Let's dig around glow, not in there. Where would brightness be folks? Let's have a look. There it is. So picture corrections, that would be the fourth tab right there. And these are uh, pretty common across Microsoft Office, but pretty important in PowerPoint, all right? So you've got your effects, you've got fill in line, size and properties, but where you'll change the brightness would be here, the picture button, and we'll go ahead and change it to 30. For me, that's a bit too bright. I wouldn't, as a photographer, wouldn't include this. I'd say that there's, um, there's just too much brightness to it. I'd keep it as is. For the sake of the project, um, let's keep it here. Now let's go up to the top once we've changed the brightness to something that your professor does not approve of. For the sake of the assignment, we'll keep it. With the picture still selected and the rotation handles uh, still uh, around your picture, click the picture format tab. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll get, we're gonna crop to a shape. This is a fun one. So picture format tab in the size group on the right hand side, click the crop button. Scroll down to crop to shape. And let's make it a flow chart, not just any ordinary flow chart. Let's make it an alternate flow chart or alternate process flow chart. So that would be a uh, picture format tab, size group, crop button, crop to shape button. Down in the flow chart group, select alternate process, which is the one I have selected. Select it. And I know you can't, you really can't tell, uh, but for the bottom left, you'll see the curve. And the top right, you'll see that it was cropped to shape um, by looking at this person's wrist. Interesting. Let's see what else we have in store. So change the brightness, alternate process, add a border, all right. Let's add a border to it so that, you know, I mean, have a look, you, it kind of just fades into the background and I think that the shape would be more prominent with a border. Let's take a look. And so adding a border, isn't too far away. In fact, with the picture still selected just above effects, picture format tab, picture styles group, select picture border. The one we're looking for is the third column, the last row. So that would be this one, light gray background two, darker 90. Go ahead and select that to see the more prominent border. I think it looks much better. Let's change the thickness though. So with the picture still selected in the picture border button, let's scroll down to weight and we'll change the weight to four and a half. I think it looks a, a lot better. And so just like our previous slide, um, at the very beginning of this, I uh, added this, um, I added this uh, placeholder that we don't need or we may not need. So let's go ahead, we'll delete it. And to make the grader happy, um, we'll go ahead and we'll click insert. And in the text group, we'll insert a text box. And really for now, anywhere is fine. Um, in fact, though, let's move, let's move elements. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna kind of back it up a little bit. Let's move elements down some for now. We can get rid of, uh, or can we? We can't get rid of that line right now, we'll leave it. Um, but up at the top, we'll go insert text box and let's put it right around there. We'll go ahead and type in Blue notes, enter, swing, enter, polyrhythm. 
Interku got that on the first shot. And then syncopation. Perfect. Once we've typed all of that out, we'll go ahead and select all of what we just typed. And for reference, we are on step number 13 now. We want to change the font size to 28 and position it horizontally at 6.5, vertically at 1.5. All right. Going through the motions. So let's first order a business. Um, I had you select the, the um, text so that we can then next change the font size to 28. Perfect. And then over here, I'm hovering over it, size and properties button in our format shape panel. We will change the horizontal position. And again, we're pretty close. 6.5 and vertical 1.5. So 6.5, type it in here. Tab, tab, 1.5, tab, and that'll move that into place. On to step number 14. Hey, let's insert that audio that I got so excited at, about at the beginning. So on slide number one, we're going to look for this, and it's in our files that we downloaded. So excellent. This will be fun. So we'll leave this here for now on step, or I'm sorry, on slide number one. Um, and we can close our format background panel on the right hand side. Um, in fact, we don't even need to be on the home tab. Um, we'll go to the insert tab and have a look around. On the right hand side is our media group. Click on the audio button in the media group and click on audio on my PC. We'll then scroll up to downloads. I'll go into the 5G Jazz Origins button. And this is our only, yeah, it's an MP3. All right, classic. The PO5G underscore Jazz Audio MP3. We'll go ahead and insert that. Oh, not there. Well, hey, let's change the position of it, right? So let's see here. We've inserted it, position it horizontally at 11 and vertically at six. 11 and 6. All right. And this may look a bit different for you. For me, I didn't get my format picture panel when I selected this, um, I want to call it a music box. I, it's a speaker is what that is. It's, it's an old speaker. So go ahead and select that. If you don't have the panel on the right-hand side, you can go ahead and right-click, and that'll open up, well, if you click it, the format picture button. And then from in here, you can go to size and properties, and then we can change it to 11 horizontally. So right here in horizontal position, change it to 11. Press tab two times, and our vertical position, our, woo, our vertical position is going to be six. Tab, and notice how it puts it in the bottom, right? Kind of away from everything. And I think it looks a lot better down there rather than right in the middle of our title, wouldn't you say? Now what we want to do is on the playback tab, which should are already be selected, we want it to start automatically. So playback tab, audio options group, click uh, start automatically. We also want to make sure that it hides or it's hidden during the show, right? And so congratulations, you're just about done. Let's make sure that everything works as we had planned, all right? So this is exciting. Let's go ahead and we'll click on the slideshow button up at the top. And as we click on the start slideshow uh, group, click on from beginning and looks great. Music's playing. One, two, three. All right, team. So we were able to uh, step number 15 was review the presentation from the beginning. Hey, you know what this means. Let's insert the footer on the notes and handouts. Display the document properties. Tag it. Submit it. We'll be done in just a moment. So from here, let's go ahead and click the insert button and have a look around. There's a lot of things going on in here. Excellent. Let's have a look at the home tab. Actually, you know what? Over here in the uh, text group. You see your header and footer button, hover over it to know what it is, and go ahead and click it. Um, one common mistake is to not click the Notes and Handouts tab, but let's go ahead and do that. Click on Notes and Handouts. We'll include the date and time, though we will have it fixed, so click Fix Date and Time. And then we need to have a footer included, and this one will be called the same thing as the file. 
which is 5G, capital G, underscore, jazz, underscore, origins. And from here, you're welcome to apply to all. We'll go back to Word. Perfect. Next time and date, page number, jazz origins. Wonderful. Display the document properties. Well, we know where that is. So back to PowerPoint. File. We'll click Info. And then Tags is in the properties on the right-hand side. And it was jazz, comma, origins. So we'll tag it right here. Jazz, comma, origins. Perfect. I will then save it. Save it again just to make sure. And from here, I will submit it to my lab IT. Let's go ahead and see how we did. So back to my lab IT, and we've downloaded the materials. We worked on the files on our computer. Now let's upload it. So we'll choose the file. We'll go to the downloads. Let's see, there we are, downloads, Jazz Origins. And here we are. That's my final product. I feel good about it. Though I do know a few steps uh, that I may be marked down, but that's all right. We learn from it. As soon as this says success, wonderful, we can submit it for grading. All the while, we're patient because it doesn't automatically give us a grade. I'll have to um, go to, it'll say pending, but what you want to do is these three vertical buttons, click them and view submissions. Perfect. Or so I thought, there we are. And with our first submission, I was fortunate to get a 100%. So, although I was a bit worried that I did not, um, you know, for example, I would move these around if I were giving this presentation so that musical origins were up at the top and that all of this, frankly, were centered. So maybe something more like this, see how it aligns. And then for this one, uh, what I would do is I would take the subtitles, put them below the line, take our actual title, put it above, make sure that it syncs. And just from a design angle and from a, a professional business angle, I think that this makes it look a lot better. So don't be deceived by the fact that the grader uh, gave us points when maybe we should have thought twice about um, you know, including the subtitle where the title should have been, for example. Um, but from here, you can scroll down, as you may know, and see where you may have made mistakes. Another really cool thing that you can do is you can download the live comments report, which will give you, uh, as you can see here, a PPTX file leaving comments on your work so you can make improvements. Um, but again, as long as you make it to a 90%, that is a 100% in my book. That's just how I'm doing math these days. If you uh, have any questions, uh, feel free. Let me know. Um, but I hope you had fun. That was PowerPoint 5G Jazz Origins, uh, the fifth grader assignment in our PowerPoint class. Looking forward to the remainder of the quarter with you. Keep up the strong work. Professor Blowers, I'm out.